Folks, I can have your attention. We have a lot of folks here to speak to uh, the fracking issue. Uh, regardless if you're going to speak pro or con, have your personal opinions of this. This is not going to be a place to debate uh, the politics of the fracking issue, which is become a hot question, but I think this board would be interested in hearing the pros and cons that you might have to add. The only thing I would add, if you have a speaker who speaks to the same thing that you're going to say, uh, then you're welcome to speak, but if that speaker has spoken what he was going to say, I would ask that uh, uh, we leave it there and we can move on. We have a lot of speakers signed up. Is that okay with everyone? Okay, here we go. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about noise control. We have uh, Betty Benny speaking about noise control. Miss Benny, please come forward. Welcome, Miss Benny, to the Board of County Commissioner of Lake County. You have a Betty Bennett, this is my husband Cliff, and we've had property out on Matlock Creek since 1980 and retired. Although the noise and the partying out there got so bad that we couldn't sleep at night, and when we have the, uh, the sheriff out there, he says, well, I can go talk to him, but uh, there's nothing we can do, our hands are tied. And it's bad. We got other elderly people live out there, and it bothers them, and they're just afraid to say anything. And something needs to be done about noise control. I mean, they party till three or four o'clock in the morning, and some nights we couldn't even sleep. And then when the sheriff goes to him, we had him out there Saturday night, and uh, he said, uh, "Well, I'll go down there and talk to him." And that's all I can do. So he went down there, and when he left, they turned the music up louder and uh, left the dome till 4 o'clock in the morning. And he told us, he said, like I said, our hands are tied. And the thing you need to do is go to the commission. So that's when I called Mr. Hickman. So we desperately need some kind of noise control. We're glad you retire, and we won't get joy. Miss Bishop, I can sympathize. I probably get three calls a week. Exactly what you're talking about. I'm sure the other board members do too. But the problem is, people think that there's a law uh, that's on the books uh, that's not on the books. That's and what of course, the attorney can speak to it of disturbing the peace. Uh, and of course, Mr. Jones can certainly speak to that better than, than any of us. But uh, you know, right now we do not have a noise ordinance. Uh, in the mountainous areas, we found it's very difficult with a noise ordinance because of where we live and what constitutes a noise is, is very hard to define. Uh, but uh, I would like to ask our attorney to speak uh, to what the law really is and what, and what we can or cannot do. Mr. Jones, would you mind speaking to that? to the extent that the commissioners are interested in trying to address this problem, I think you can uh, consider the passing of a noise ordinance. I think you, uh, Mr. Bill, has identified some of the problems that are associated with the noise ordinance. Uh, to some degree, noise is subjective. What, what, is, well, they, what is unpleasant to one person uh, may be pleasant or, or neutral to others. There are some, some ordinance and court of appeals decisions <coughs> in the state. There are some other uh, ordinances which try to define what uh, offensive noise is. And quite candidly, I think they do a fairly good job. The uh, <coughs> bottom line, though, is this county can pass an ordinance, but this county will have to rely upon law enforcement and judicial attorney's office to enforce it. And so, I don't know what the attitude of the judicial attorney's office would be about that. My thought is, is you know, not particularly egregious situation, my thought is that they would probably be possible in those cases. Well, 
and a large portion of this fracking fluid is returned to the surface and stored in open pits. Two things can happen here. One, pits can leak, contaminating uh, nearby groundwater. Second, during really high rainfall, such as had we had here during Hurricane Ivan, those pits can overflow with the contained uh, water running down into nearby streams and drainages. Uh, right now, the rules as proposed allow these pits to be within 200 feet of uh, year-round surface streams. Ultimately, this waste has to be treated. Fortunately, uh, the law is written such that the companies cannot inject waste into the ground. The legislation itself, by wording, only prevents the disposal of chemical and biological warfare agents and high-level radioactive waste in the waters of the state. Other than that, it's currently open for disposal into our streams and rivers based on whatever rules DNR uh, ultimately adopts in their chemical rulemaking process. Federal law is of no help because the Energy Policy Act of 2005 exempts this industry from virtually all environmental controls. Another option is to send it to local waste, waste, wastewater treatment plants that are not equipped to handle the salt, hazardous and radioactive material contained in the uh, return water. Since the drillers do not have to disclose all the chemicals they use, uh, the plant operators won't even know which of the 750 odd chemicals that they may be required to treat uh, or whether the material is going to poison their biological treatment process. And that doesn't even include radioactive heavy metals in the shale itself. Potential fracking zones in North Carolina are only about 10,000 feet deep. They're much shallower than the formations that are being processed in Pennsylvania and much closer to the total water supplies. In Macon County, we have wells greater than 1,500 feet deep. If you look at the geology of Piedmont, where the fracking is most likely to occur, the ground is riddled with faults and other vertical pathways from the fracking zone into the groundwater resource. If you inject water and hazardous chemicals into these zones under high pressure, the chances of forcing those chemicals upward is much higher, and you threaten the supplies of groundwater users in this area. In western North Carolina, as you know, we have a lot of fractured rock, which presents the same problem. You've probably seen reports of flammable tap water in areas that are being fracked. These reports are true, and the source of flammable <laughs> methane is the, uh, is the fracking operation. There's a difference between old gas that is being fracked and new gas. What's showing up in the tap water is definitely old gas and highlights the problem with calling this technology safe. The construction of operate and operation of these wells to ensure the safety of local citizens and water supplies and not be assumed. It is true that hydraulic fracking, fracturing, is a relatively old technology. What's puzzling is why it's been done so poorly and caused so many problems in extracting natural gas. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Larry Stinger, who is next, I believe. Mr. Stinger. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Chairman Beal, uh, Commissioner Haven, Commissioner Tate, Commissioner Vivian, Attorney Jones, and Manager Mr. Rowland, and staff. Um, at my age, there's a few things that get me off the front porch. I thought I retired, but then I found out about fracking. So tonight I'd like to address the impact that fracking has on property rights and community rights. Fracking is defined as a heavy industrial hazardous land use, and normally all heavy industrial land use is defined and categorized away from commercial, residential, or institutional uses. However, in Macon County, fracking can be placed almost next to your home. Now, a fracking site uses anywhere from three to eight acres of newly created flat land, and it also uses a heavy load on roads, and as you heard before, millions of gallons of water. Now, some of the things that are kind of scary for me as a homeowner is that if you don't own the mineral rights on your property, then the fracking industry can come in and access your property. 
Now, even if you own the property rights, they can still come in and access your property if your neighbors have agreed to allow them on their property. It's called a pooling or forced pooling of interest, and it takes away your rights. Mr. Jones, you probably as an attorney have heard that. You haven't. Okay, well, there's, there's a project for you. <laughs> Another right we lose is our right to know what is going on under our land. A fracking well can extend horizontally to cover a two-mile radius. And each of us should know what we have under our ground. We can also be arrested if we, if we tell anyone what toxic chemicals are being injected in the ground. If the company that does it claims it's a trade secret. So how do we determine if our drinking water or our property is contaminated if we don't know what chemicals are being used? Now, all fracking wells will eventually be shut down because of low production. These will be capped with concrete. In Pennsylvania, which is, has the oldest fracking wells in the United States, they are now determining that a new study is showing that all the wells that they've checked so far are leaking methane. No concrete and no steel will last forever in the ground. So what we're looking at is the potential long range to have contamination leaking from these wells. Now, Pennsylvania has over 300,000 wells already in the ground. They have a major problem for their grandkids and future generations. Now, banks, insurance companies, and real estate professionals are also shying away from properties that have fracking wells on them. They don't want to be part of a potential pollution issue if the homeowner walks away from the property. Now, if you're a homeowner and you have pollution, you can go against the fracking company, but if they declare bankruptcy, you're the responsible party. Now, you guys, as local government, also lose your right to regulate the fracking industry because the state law now overrides all of the local ordinances. And if you will find that if the planning board will go back through the local ordinances, there's several issues that now have to be changed that lessens the amount of regulation you can provide to protect the people of Macon County. Now, Macon County, as you all know, you all live here, I live here, I love it. It has a rich cultural heritage. It has natural beauty, clean air, and clean water, and a healthy tourist business. Will we trade these items for methane gas and potentially toxic chemicals. This rush to frack is morally wrong and constitutionally wrong. There are not enough safeguards in place to protect our water supplies, our health, our natural heritage, and our children and grandchildren's future. So until we get those guarantees, the message I'd like to see go back to all of you is no fracking. It, in reality, we are better off with long-term sustainable energy such as solar and, and wind. Those are sustainable. Gas <coughs> and oil are non sustainable. I thank you very much for this. Mr. Taylor, before you sit down, Mr. Uh, Gavin, he gave his what's your background, Mr. Well, um, I've had 10 years <coughs> on the planning board uh, since retired, got a nice paycheck. Um, <laughs> uh, I also have 25 years in the water and wastewater industry. Um, we install systems all over the world. I know a little bit about corrosion and water and chemistry. And um, it scares me what the fracking potential could be when they start failing. So that's why I'm taking a position now. I don't want to see Macon County have to deal with that issue 10, 20, 50 years, even 100 years from now. Thank you very much. Next, we have signed is Mr. Susan Hurdle. Thank you all. Yep. Um, my name is Susan Urban, and I'm the coordinator of the League of Women Voters of Macon County. The primary mission of the League is to promote citizen participation in government and to promote and protect our rights and responsibilities as citizens. And that's what uh, the speakers are doing here tonight. They have informed themselves and are advocating for the good of our community. They're not just expressing personal opinions. You have heard some highlights, and we'll hear more, on the threats to our water supply, streams, and air, to our health, to our long-term economy, to our property rights, to our communities, 
to our tax dollars and to the beauty and tranquility of the mountains. All around the state and western North Carolina, people are speaking out and communities are passing resolutions, including Swain County, Hayesville, Silva, Webster, and most recently our own town of Franklin. And the resolutions are growing stronger against fracking. Rather than just asking for a moratorium, Silver, Webster, and Franklin all have come out against exploration in our area. Exploration that would be done with tax dollars. And all the Western resolutions protest loss of local government control. No matter what our personal opinions may be on fracking, the state has denied us, with the regulations they are passing, the right to make informed decisions for our towns, counties, and own property, something we should all be concerned about. The legislature is attempting to severely limit the power of local governments con to control what happens in our counties and towns. This would change the balance of power between state and lo local governments throughout North Carolina, and we should not quietly concede this attempted diminishment of local authority. There are, in fact, options for local governments to pass resolutions and ordinances related to fracking, and we urge all our elected officials and citizens to take advantage of those and stand up for local authority and control. We are asking you for several things in addition to that. Because of heavy citizen input, there will now be a Diener public hearing on Mining and Energy Commission rules at the Fine Arts Center at WCU on September 12th from 5 until 9 p.m. And we hope that all of you will attend that and listen to the public statements. We ask you to take the time to inform yourself. Yes, it's a complex issue and you're going to be hearing various sides. But you are the ones who are going to have to evaluate the information that is available and reach an intelligent conclusion. We ask you to consider the real risks and negative impacts of fracking and consider what you can do as our elected leaders to guide our county in the right direction, including considering passing a strong <coughs> resolution against exploration and fracking in Macon County. Fracking will be an election issue in North Carolina in November. Fracking will be an election issue in Macon County in November. Voters are going to expect candidates to take a clear position. Your voices and leadership matter, and we need you to take a strong stand for our community. Thank you for your time and for allowing us to speak tonight. We sincerely appreciate this opportunity to participate in local <coughs> Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Janine Webster. Welcome, Ms. Webster. Thank you. you. Speak to the fracking issue. Also. Yes, I would like to, in opposition of it. Um, I'm just going to take a brief little, because you have all these very learned people. I'm an author. I <coughs> published three books, but I'm a really good researcher. And um, what I've been researching, I'd like to speak to the landowner rights and this forced pooling that we have here. Um, the bill, the way it's written, says that if they come into an area and they find a pocket of gas, then they're allowed to go to everybody else and, and form a pool to pull the gas out of the ground. You're not allowed to say no. That right's been taken away. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that I checked with several of our local banks in this area. I checked with Quicken, with FHA, with HUD, um, and found out that there's a provision in everybody's mortgage that says that you're not allowed to sell your gas rights or your mineral rights without informing your mortgage lender. If you do, you're in direct default of your mortgage and they can call your mortgage at any time. So what's happening is the state is telling us that we don't have the right to say no that in some cases, if we refuse, they can drill down and come sideways underneath our house anyway. That's what, the way some of the landmen get you to sign the lease. So your property is, is ruined with all of the chemicals that Mr. Stinger was talking about. In some cases, they can even fine you three times the cost of the drilling process if you don't allow them to drill. It's $8,000 to $12,000 to drill one well. So if you're talking about three times that, that a citizen gets 
fine. You're talking anywhere from twenty four to what thirty six thousand dollars in fines. So we're we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Raleigh's taken all of our rights away from us. We don't have anybody to stand up for us. Um, the other thing is homeowner insurance and gas leases do not cover damage to the property. Um, you can lose, the property values go down like in Texas and Ohio and Pennsylvania, property values have gone down as much as 75%. Now I know one bank in this town owns $50 million worth of mortgages and residences and that's not the largest holder. So I'm frightened, I'm asking the commission to protect us and our county from what Raleigh's doing. We don't have anybody to speak for us. They've stripped us of everything. And certainly if the cell towers and you're concerned about health problems there and the aesthetic of those, wait until they bring the rigs in here and they flare 24 hours a day on all this property, the noise, the snow. And so um, today before I came, just one more thing, I read a newspaper article that said that they were primarily interested in the Piedmont area at first. But now that they've passed a budget for exploration, they'll be coming to the Precambrian Rift, which is us, this fall. They just talked about it today. That's today's press release. So we're out of time. We need your protection, and I'm asking you, if you would please do a public hearing on this. Would you please, you know, do an educational hearing, something, so that we might get some proposal or some say in what happens in Macon County. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next we have Belinda Charles. I just live here in Macon County. I rent cabins. I have a cabin business. I've been in the business for about 20 years now. Raised my family here. Love Macon County. People come here. You know that Macon County is basically a tourist town. That most of our money and income comes from tourism. It's serious. People love it here. The beautiful air, the mountains. My question, I just have a question that I'd like you to ponder, and that is, what's the benefit of frank fracking for us? What's the benefit of natural gas if our water is polluted and our air is polluted? I don't see a benefit. So um, I just ask, this is such a crucial time in our life and for our beautiful town to just really um, help us, help us in it. We need your help. Thank you so much. <coughs> Next we have Gail Chapman. Chapman. Commissioners, I would just like to say that I am in favor of fracking. From what I've heard tonight, I think it's apparent that many people do not know that we've had fracking in North Carolina for many years with no problem. We've had fracking in Macon County for many years with no problem. We already fracked the wells. It is good for employment. It is good for the economy. I'm in favor. Next we have Mr. Les Best we've heard from you before. Yes. No thanks. Thank you. Next we have Don Swanson. Mr. Swanson, you have the floor. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. <coughs> I'm speaking uh, on the subject of economic development. That's allowed. Talking about fracking, is that you're trying to give the fracking? Well, we'll, yeah, we'll get there, sure. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, little analysis of our situation here. We have no railroads. We have no winter support. It's very tricky. We have a lack of available, educated workforce. So we're going to pin our hopes on the economy of this county on a softball tournament. We're, we're going to become the softball tournament capital of the world. That's, that's what we're building our economic future. Well, the Dakotas and eastern Montana, as you all know, have, have relatively no unemployment. They've been drawing people in from all over the country. Uh, 
they, they don't have the people to do the work that needs to be done. They are so, they're, they're economic, economically booming. Pennsylvania is booming. Texas is booming. And it is a direct result of fracking. So let's let's take the overall here. We have no no nuclear energy production. We have minimal offshore drilling drilling. We have no Keystone pipeline. We have a war on coal. And if Al Gore has his way, we'd have no automobiles. Check it out. Earth in the Balance, page 192, written by Al Gore. Uh, I don't know if the opposition is looking to take us back to the Stone Age. Uh, we're on our way. Thanks. Just a little tidbit of information that you might not have heard and you heard it mentioned before. Uh, the Catholic Association, of course, has been very involved in the fracking. If you're there listening to the discussion like I was in Raleigh when this was debated, uh, a very interesting debate. There was no debate. But uh, the Murphy Bell is what you're going to be hearing a lot about, uh, speaking to Mr. Swanson. It's made up of the former rocks in North Carolina's western North counties, Cherokee, Clay, Graham, Haywood, Jackson, Maitland, Swain. Uh, the USGS uh, is going to do comprehensive samples to determine the total organic carbon in the rocks and the amount of heat and pressure rocks have undergone before it can be determined to contain natural gas. The USGS has given considerably less information here than in the in the Dan River and Deep River basins. So it's unclear whether there is any gas of what formations would be found that was released. Uh, I guess it might have been the same press release you were talking about. So mm -hmm. just just to put that out for general information we'll move on. Mr. Doug Wood. Is Doug here? He's in Washington. He can't speak from that. <laughs> Mr. Rich Rob is going to speak to Mr. Rich's left. And I'm sorry, uh, this next thing that looks like Mark Bishy. I'm so sorry. Maybe somebody with better eyes can read the name. I don't know. <laughs> Third one you can't read. DIS, <laughs> <laughs> uh, last name DISC KY. First name maybe uh, Mark, M A R C. Did he work close to anybody? I wouldn't want to lose anybody. I know a name close to that, but he's not here. What's the name? Mark Bischoff. I believe that's his. Well, he's in, he's in Orlando. How did he sign his name? I've <laughs> <laughs> never been able to read it. Sure. Same way Doug Woodard and yeah. yeah. Okay. I believe that's the right name. Of okay. The name. He's not here. Okay. The next we have Sonia Thompson. Sonia President. Yeah. Welcome, Ms. Thompson. Thank you, Commissioners, for allowing us to speak on this. I'm not fancy and I don't have a, a lot of um, deep knowledge about fracking. I have read several articles, scientific articles about it, and I do support safe hydraulic fracking for several reasons, and I'll list them. It has been used safely since 1947 on over a million wells, U.S. wells. The industry is heavily regulated with strict precautions. And shale gas will give us more jobs and more affordable energy. And that's Thank it. you, ma'am. Next, we have John. Patton. John, did I say it pretty close? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, you have the floor. Well, thank you for being here to listen to us tonight. Uh, I have a home in Franklin and a business in Silva, so. I spend most of my waking hours in Silver, and I apologize for not knowing most of you. <laughs> um, a lot of people come here tonight with facts and figures. I come with one. It's 10%. I don't know if any of you have seen the movie Gasland. 
gas lamp too, and there are others. Uh, yeah, I'm a natural skeptic when I see a group with an agenda produces a documentary. I wonder how much of the truth they have stretched. But let me just pose this question. If only 10% of what they portray in these movies is true, why would you invite this in your, your, into your community? And with that, I'll say thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Next we have Mr. Bill McCarney. Very well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as you know, I'm a citizen of Bacon County, the New York Grove community. Uh, and I'm going to be fairly brief because I think some of the technical points have been well covered. Uh, I'd like to make three separate comments. One is as a person <clears throat> whose personal and professional lives are all bound up with water, I'm very aware, and I think most of us are, that on a level from the planet down to Macon County down to the individual community, water is an increasingly large issue for us as human beings. Where to get it, how much, but what quality, and what cost. Therefore, I tend to be very conservative about any development which threatens the quantity or quality of ground or surface water. Uh, my second point, I'm gratified at some of the comments that were made in the hearing about the cell towers, because I sometimes think we get into these things and we get off as if economic issues are the only issues that matter. Obviously, they matter. Uh, but I was gratified to hear that the county ordinance and also several of the speakers uh, referred to the need to protect the beauty of the mountains and essentially to protect our quality of life. And I don't think that goes very well with large-scale industrial activities, which really is what fracking wells are. <clears throat> My third comment may be a little beside the point, but I think it's relevant. And I'd like to say this without, hopefully without stereotyping anyone or putting words in anyone's mouth, but it's passing strange to me um, that people who tend to be very very much defenders of private property rights. Some of them are supporting something which stands to infringe on our private property rights. And by the same uh, the same token, uh, people who are very conservative about government spending are supporting exploratory activities which are going to be financed with government money, especially given that everything I've been able to hear from geologists suggests that there's a pretty low probability of finding what they're looking for in this area in commercially viable quantities. Is that a good use of public funds? Um, so with that, I would just, my personal request would be that you consider making, joining the other towns, the other counties, the organizations, uh, making a statement of conscience on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Buchan? Yeah, that's me. Buchan Thank you very much. I guess you know where I stand. <laughs> you gentlemen have you any place the board Mr. Buchan, we need to hear oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I wonder if these two gentlemen have any evidence of what they were talking about, about all this poisoning going on anywhere. Do you have any? Bring it with you. That's not the week. You can okay. present that privately. We're going okay. to for information. Okay. I haven't seen any. And I, I, I'm an engineer by background. Uh, and I live here in Macon County. Uh, and I just have never. So that's all I've got to say. I think that's a bunch of baloney if you don't have some evidence. Thank you, sir. Next we have Mr. Pete Drummond. Mr. Drummond, welcome. Thank you, sir. Oh, we've got a move. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me, sir. You have the floor. Thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, here to speak in support 
of safe, clean, and regulated hydraulic fracturing in North Carolina. Because of time constraints tonight, neither side of this fracking debate can adequately present their positions. Unfortunately, the discussion of fracking has left the realm of reasoned debate over actual facts and science into the political realm of misinformation and half-truths from anti-frackers in an attempt to mischaracterize fracking to scare an uninformed public. No better example can be cited than the fracking crew TV ads which recently ran across the state attacking selected Republican legislators who had supported Senate Bill 786, which allowed fracking in North Carolina. These ads were financed by three well-funded environmental groups at a cost of over a half a million dollars. You've heard that fracking has been around for 67 years. Within the past 10 years, fracking combined with directional willing, drilling in formerly unproductive shale formations has opened up vast new sources of oil and natural gas in many states. This success has led to a forecast that the U.S. will be number one in production of oil and natural gas in the world this year, surpassing Saudi Arabia and Russia. Fracking is boosting our energy independence and economy. It has also led to a drastic drop in the price of natural gas over the past several years. Natural gas is now one of the most economical energy sources. It was only three to four years ago that concerns about fracking began being raised by environmental groups, left-wing politicians, and the media. In fact, up until that time, the Sierra Club had promoted natural gas as a bridge fuel from coal to green energy. These groups now see these vast new natural gas resources provided by fracking as a mortal threat to their much more expensive green energy. <coughs> Thus, the recently initiated war on fracking in North Carolina, as well as generally around the world. I urge you to read the report issued April 30th, 2012 to North Carolina's legislature by the Departments of uh, Environment, Natural Resources, and Commerce titled North Carolina Oil and Gas Study. The report concluded, quote, after reviewing other studies and experiences in oil and gas producing states, Diener has concluded that information available to date suggests that production of natural gas by means of hydraulic fracturing can be done safely as long as the right protections are in place. It answers many of the criticism made by anti-fractors. Both the full report and executive summary are available on the DNR website. I believe that after considering the facts about fracking, most open-minded people will come to the same conclusion reached by Diener and the North Carolina legislature. Hydraulic fracturing can be done safely and cleanly with proper regulation in North Carolina's very limited shale deposits. Since fracking has moved into the political realm, I ask the Republican majority on this board to take the bold step of issuing a resolution in support of fracking. The 2014 platform of the North Carolina Republican Party states, we support efforts to develop oil and natural gas through safe, clean hydraulic fracturing. Republicans on this board would also be displaying their support for Senator Davis's pro-fact positions as a co-sponsor of Senate Bill 786. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I've got, uh, I've got a handout here I'd like to pass around fracking. The next yeah. speaker will be Mr. Dan Cow. Dan, I think Dan Lee. Dan, Dan had late. That concludes our fracking education. <laughs> <laughs> I, I signed up on one of the lists. What did, what's your name? Vicky Farmer. Vicky? Yeah. It don't matter, Vicky, I don't see your name. Come out of here. Oh. I don't know what this oh. is. You're more than welcome to come today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
me. And it's Vicky Barnard. Vicky. Okay. Uh -huh. And I'm an average citizen, and I feel tonight to speak up uh, mainly for my friends and neighbors, especially elderly people and children. I just retired a year ago after 30 years of uh, service as a public school teacher uh, working with special needs children. And I think that sometimes children's voices don't get heard in our government offices very well. Um, I was very I was kind of neutral towards fracking. Um, I'm all for independent energy in America. I would love to see us keep our oil, keep our gas. I've had, uh, you know, natural gas in other places I've lived. It's a nice, clean energy. I don't have anything against that. Uh, but when I started watching videos and reading materials on both sides of the issue, I have to conclude that there is no safe, clean way to frack. Because accidents happen. I don't care what kind of industry, when, when you're drilling like they are, accidents happen. You go places you're not supposed to. You fracture things you're not supposed to. And I feel like the natural resources that we have here in this county are our greatest treasure. And our children are the next greatest treasure. And what are we going to do to the natural resources that we're leaving them? You know, this generation is a steward for the next generation. So I feel like as a good steward, I have to stand here and say, let's don't open the door to fracking, although I realize that the state already has and that we have very limited uh, position to say. But, you know, as citizens, we can at least have our say and speak and I appreciate y'all's time. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else who did not sign up and wish to speak to the issue or any issue before we move on? We'll close it by saying yes sir. Mr. Bale. Yes sir. Thank you very much. Hal Chapman from the metropolis of Otto. I won't go into a bunch of things here. But I've got 14, 15 things right here. Gina McCarthy, if you don't know her, she's our Environmental Protection Agency Administrator at the present time. Quote, there's nothing inherently <coughs> dangerous in fracking that sound engineering practices cannot accomplish. Lisa Jackson former EPA administrator. I am not aware of any proven case where the fracking process itself has affected water. And I'm not going to bore you with the next 14 or 15, but Secretary of Department of Energy, <coughs> Secretary of Energy, presently, people up there in D.C., and we can go on and on. I'm just saying, once again, it's like everything else, we're going to do it for the children. God, I hear it for the children. I taught for 35 years. I've heard the same thing. Everything we're going to do for the children, and we don't. Look at the mess that we've got them in now. And I can go on. I'm not, because I'll get pretty fired up about any other comments or anything else to come before the board before we move on to the rest of our agenda? We will say this, I think I speak for this board of commissioners or I speak for myself. What we are really disappointed in, you didn't hear them talk, nobody talked about it a whole lot, is this is probably the strongest mandate to come from Raleigh that we speak to the counties if they don't need anything. Uh, that's what really bothers any level as a county commissioner, if you hear about the community, you should be concerned about that. So, of all the things, when you pro con, uh, it's going to be the best thing since sliced bread or, or might ruin the environment. The county really has no say. And if you read the statute real closely, you'll find out that that's, I think, when a buddy even goes above and beyond that. And this is the first time that we know of, of this happening. That, uh, and you would think that this legislature, all legislators, would not restrict that because 
but they have, and it is what it is, and uh, the, the, I think this board will take into consideration all the comments, mm -hmm. and we appreciate the comments, all pro and all con. Thank you so much for being here. We've got to move on. Now, we get into the thing.